I, I completely got your critiques of uh, predictive processing, which I, I concur with, but what are your views on uh, something like the free energy principle by, by Carl Frisson, who after all is a neuroscientist? Uh, would you say it's it's a good model or framework to work work with, or do you think it has? No, I think it's a bogus analogy. <laughs> so so yeah. it's, it's, it's obviously an analogy because the term comes from physics. In free energy, there's a perfectly well understood idea where energy is the capacity to work and free energy is the energy that's available in the current contest to do work. Great idea, really important. So what's the free energy principle? Well, people who, who are big fans of predictive processing have worked their butts off to try to figure out what it is. And Friston's a horrible writer. He writes with incredible obscurity. He, he writes like a postmodernist, actually, kind of postmodernist mathematician. And that's not what mathematics is supposed to be like. Mathematics is incredibly powerful because it's clear and you can see what's going on. But, but his, his math is unclear and the free energy principle uh, is what I call a bogus analogy. The term comes from my book, Balance. I wrote a book on balance a couple of years ago. And, and it talks both about the neuroscience of balance, but also talks about the way balance has become a metaphor that pervades uh, human thought. Uh, and But different metaphors have different values. Metaphors aren't all good. Some of them are really evil. They can be used to defend slavery, for example. Uh, so your question is, uh, what, what kind of metaphor have we got here? Is it one that's good? or unclear or, or utterly bogus. Uh, well, here, I think it's bogus because he's trying to carry over from physics some sense of profundity from free energy. But if you look what he means by that, as far as, far as anyone's been able to figure it out, and people like Anil Seth have tried to figure out what he meant by it, you say, well, it's just another way of saying predictive processing. So trying to say that what the brain is doing is to make predictions about the future in order to figure out what's likely to happen and satisfy its goals. So that's that's not a that's not a reasonable idea. It's a real hypothesis and I think it's one of the six things that brains do. But to elevate that into a free energy principle using a bogus physical ex phys expression for physics, as I think is frankly uh, illegitimate. It's just not a good use of metaphor. It's not a good use of analogy. It's a highly misleading term that is pseudo profile. It's pseudo profundity. Uh, it's kind of like actually among the postmodernists you mentioned, I don't think I don't think uh, uh, Foucault is is uh, bogus. I think he's actually got a lot of insights into the way society works. But a lot of the other people in that category, uh, Derrida and uh, and often Zizek, they really just don't understand the difference between uh, obscurity and profundity. <laughs> so the, that is, you should be able to figure out what are they saying? Is it true or is it false? And you can do that often with Foucault. Uh, you can do that with good cognitive scientists. But the idea of free energy is just so kind of obscure that it's hard to make sense of it. Now, th and I think actually the predictive processing idea is clear enough that you can see that it's not true. Because as I said, the mind does a lot of other things besides prediction, and it does it by means other than Bayesian processing. So predictive processing is an idea that's interesting but wrong, whereas free energy is an idea that's just too obscure to be even wrong. I see, because as a layperson, my my confusion always with the free energy principle was I, I saw what Professor Fisson was getting, and in fact, I'm currently reading his book, Active Inference. <coughs> But as a meta theory, as like a theory of mind that that encompasses what the mind is, I always felt it lacked certain other parts of what the mind is. Like, for instance, coherence, ex explanatory coherence. Uh, and emotion for evaluation. Yes. Uh, and appraisal and communication with others. You need all of these things <clears throat> if you're going to have a full theory of mind. It's really just got one tiny corner. It, it commits something that I've called Thales' disease. I mean, Thales was really the first philosopher and the first scientist, absolutely brilliant thinker. But he came up with a theory that was just a little too simple. His theory is everything is water. <laughs> well, uh, that was brilliant. It's absolutely simple. But uh, even by Aristotelian standards, where you also need earth, air, and fire, it just didn't cut it. And of course, now that we know there's 118 different elements, no, it doesn't work. So what I call Thales' disease is coming up with a theory that looks brilliantly simple, but it's just way too simple. And that's definitely true of predictive processing as well.